Community Voices Comedy Edition. Hello, it's me, Richard Nixon, live on the Old Globe YouTube page, letting you know that this is the satire episode of Community Voices Comedy Edition. I'm also here to let you know that I am not a crook. <laughs> Just kidding! Surprise! <laughs> it was me the whole time. Your host and friend, Katie H., the workshop leader of this here program, Community Voices Comedy Edition. I'm not former polarizing presidential figure Richard Nixon, who is indeed very dead, but this guy knew how to get impeached. Am I right? Woo! <laughs> this slightly pointed opening act is brought to you by today's workshop theme, satire. In today's workshop, we're going to explore this style of writing, read a really cool example featuring some fabulous artists, and then send you on your own mission to develop your own incredibly witty satirical piece. And since our reading is a little longer today, I'm going to jump right in and speed up my intro and maybe my outro. So what the heck is satire, Katie? Well, it's when you use humor, or more specifically ridicule, to dissect and explore the weaknesses of either groups of humanity or one person specifically. There are so many examples of modern satire and culture, you just might not know it. On the lowbrow and very popular side of the spectrum, there are shows like South Park and Family Guy that have created an entire structural gimmick around pointedly ripping apart modern civilization and pop culture. Some other examples of modern satire can be found in just about any mockumentary type setup. Movies like Waiting for Guffman and Best in Show and We Are Spinal Tap are creating a mockery of a subject, and that is entirely satire. Also, shows like Parks and Rec and The Office are satires of modern life. So you know the genre pretty well. Let's jump right in to reading our play example for today so you can get one more example of satire and you can hear it in action. Today, I'm thrilled that we are reading Los Vendidos, Spanish for the sold ones or the sellouts, this is a one-act satirical play by Chica Chicano playwright Luis Valdez, a founding member of El Teatro Campesino. The play examines stereotypes of Latinos or Latinx culture in California during the Reagan era and how this commentary and, and how this, not commentary, how this community were treated by local, state, and federal governments. All right, let's meet our actors for today and jump into our reading. Hooray, hello, hello, Valeria, hello, Jerry, hello, Letty, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> As I mentioned, this is a little bit of a longer read, so we are going to just dive right in. You ready? All right, let's do this. Los Vendidos by Luis Valdez. The characters are Honest Sancho, Secretary, Farm Worker, Johnny Pachuco, Revolucionario, and Mexican American. Scene Honest Sancho's use Mexican lot and Mexican Mexican coat. You know what? I just made a decision. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm going to be able to read this well enough. So I'm going to cut this a little bit for myself because I don't think it's necessary for me to read all of the words that I'm butchering and, <laughs> and make this bad. So um, just so you know, I'm going to, I'm going to cut out all of that. So I'm going to start this, uh, I'm going to start the introduction of this reading again. Okay, here we go. Los Vendidos by Luis Valdez. Characters, Honest Sancho, Secretary, Farm Worker, Johnny Pachuco, Revolucion <laughs> Revolucionario, Revolucionario, the world you're ours, Revolucionario. Revolucionario. Revolucionario, Revolucionario. Okay, one more time. <laughs> it's gonna sound like a white girl. Uh, Los, 
<laughs> you're like, it's those two words. <laughs> you can't read it. And so, wait, just actually to clarify, are you going to say Ana Sanchez used Mexican lot and, and that's it? Or I'm going to say, say seen. Ana Sanchez used Mexican lot and Mexican curio shop. Three models are on display in Ana Sancho's shop. To the right, there is Revolucionario. At center, I'm going to skip all of the like description. Yeah. So you'll hear my white lady pronunciation of some things, but not all of it. All right, let's do it one more time. Luis Vel, oh, sorry, my goodness. Okay. Los Vendidos by Luis Valdez. Characters. Honest Sancho, secretary, farm worker, Johnny Pochuco, revolucionario, and Mexican American. Scene Honest Sancho's used Mexican lot and Mexican curio shop. Three models are on display in Honest Sancho's shop. To the right, there is a revolucionario. At center, there is the farm worker. At stage left is the Pachuco, and Ana Sancho is moving among his motto, models, dusting them off and preparing them for another day of business. Bueno, bueno, mis monos, vamos a ver a quién vendemos ahora, ¿no? Cubo, I'm Ana Sancho, and this is my shop. Antes fui contratista, pero ahora logré mi negocio. All I need now is a customer. A bell rings off stage. Hi, a customer. Good morning. I'm Miss Jimenez from... Oh, una chicana. Welcome, welcome, señorita Jimenez. Jimenez. Okay. My name is Miss Jimenez. Don't you speak English? What's wrong with you? Oh, oh nothing. Nothing, señorita G Jimenez. I'm here to help you. <laughs> That's better. As I was saying... I'm a secretary from Governor Reagan's office, and we're looking for a Mexican type for the administration. Well, you come to the right place, lady. This is Honest Sancho's used Mexican lot, and we got all types here. Any particular type you want? Yes, we're looking for somebody suave. Suave. Um, debonair. De buen aire. Um, Dark? Prieto. But of course not too dark. No muy prieto. Perhaps beige? Beige. Just the tone. Así como cafecito con leche, no? One more thing. He must be hard working. That could only be one model. Step right over here to the center of the shop, lady. <laughs> they cross <clears throat> to the farm worker. This is our standard farm worker model. As you can see, in the words of our beloved Senator George Murphy, he is built close to the ground. Also take special notice of his four-ply Goodyear Guaraches made from the rain tire. This wide brim sombrero is an extra added feature. Keeps off the sun, rain, and dust. Yes, it does look durable. And our farm worker model is friendly. Muy amable. Watch. Muy buenos dias, señorita. My, he is friendly. Didn't I tell you? Loves his patrones. But his most attractive feature is that he's hard working. Let me show you. El jale. As you can see, he is cutting grapes. Oh, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> he also picks cotton. Versatile, isn't he? He also picks melons. That's his slow speed for late in the season. Here's his fast speed. Chihuahua. I, I mean, goodness, he sure is a hard worker. <clears throat> and that is in the half of it. Do you see these little holes in his arms that appear to be pores? <clears throat> During these hot, sluggish days in the field, when the vines or the branches get so entangled, it's almost impossible to move. These holes emit a certain grease that allows our model to slip and slide right through the crop with no trouble at all. Wonderful. <clears throat> but is he economical? Economical. Senorita, you are looking at the Volkswagen of Mexicans. Pennies a day is all it takes. One plate of beans and tortillas will keep him going all day. That and chile. Plenty of chile. Chile jalapeños, chile verde, chile colorado. But of course, if you do give him chile. <laughs> Farm worker turns left. Farm worker bends over. 
then you have to go ahead change his oil filter once a week. Well, what about storage? No problem. You know, these new farm labor camps in our honorable governor Reagan has built by, uh, by Parlier or Racing City. They were designed with our model in mind. Five, six, seven, even 10 in one of those shacks will give you no trouble at all. You can also put him in old barns, old cars, river banks. You can even leave him out in the field overnight with no worry. Remarkable. And here's an added feature. Every year at the end of the season, this model goes back to Mexico and doesn't return automatically until next spring. How about that? But tell me, does he speak English? Another outstanding feature is that the last year this model was programmed to go out on strike. Huelga! Huelga! Hermanos, salganse de esos files! Oh, no, no, no. We, we can't strike in, in the state capital. Well, he also scabs. Me vendo barato y qué? Well, that, that's much better. But you didn't answer my question. Does he speak English? Bueno, no, but no. he has other no, other features. No, he, he just won't do. Okay, okay, pues we have other models. <clears throat> I, I hope so. We need is something a little more sophisticated. Sophisticate? An urban model. Ah, from the city. Mm -hmm. Step right back. <clears throat> Over here in this corner of the shop is exactly what you're looking for. Introducing our new 1969 Johnny Pachuco model. This is our fastback model, streamlined, built for speed, low riding, city life. Take a look at some of these features. Mag shoes, dual exhaust, green chartreuse paint job, dark tint windshield, a little poof on the top. Let me just turn him on. Johnny walks to the center stage with a pachuco bounce. What was that? That, senorita, was the Chicano shuffle. Okay, what does he do? Anything and everything necessary for city life. For instance, survival. He knife fights. Johnny pulls out a switchblade and swings at secretary. Secretary screams. Ah! He dances. Angel baby, my angel baby. And here's a feature no city model can be without. He gets arrested, but not without resisting, of course. En la madre, la placa. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Oh, no, no. We can't have a rest. We must maintain law and order. But he's bilingual. Bilingual? Simon, que yes, <laughs> he speaks English. Johnny, give us some English. Oh, fuck you. <gasps> I've, I've never been so insulted in my, in my whole life. Well, he learned it in your school. I don't care where he learned it. But he's economical. Economical? Nickels and dimes. You can keep Johnny running on hamburgers, Taco Bell tacos, Lucky Lager beer, Thunder beer wine, Jaska. Jaska? Mota. Mota. Genius. Marijuana. That, that's against the law. Yeah. He also uh, glue. Johnny inhales glue. Ah, oh, that's too much, man. That's no. too much to say. Mr. Sancho, I don't think Wait a this... Minute. He has other qualities I know you love. Uh, for example, uh, an inferiority complex. You think you're better than me, I say, huh? He swings his switchblade. He can also be beaten and he bruises. Cut him and he bleeds. Kick him and he... Sancho beats, bruises, and kicks Pachuco. Would you like to try it? Oh, <laughs> I, I couldn't. Be my guest. He's a great scapegoat. No, <laughs> really. Please. Well, all right. Just once. She kicks Pachuco. Oh, he's so soft. Wasn't that good? Try again. She kicks Pachuco. He's wonderful. She kicks him again. <laughs> okay, that's enough, lady. You'll ruin the merchandise. Yes, our Johnny Pachuco model can give you many hours of pleasure. 
why the LAPD just bought 20 of these to train their rookie cops on. And talk about maintenance, senorita. You are looking at an entirely self-supporting machine. You're never going to find our Johnny Pachuco model in the relief roles. No, sir. This model knows how to liberate. Uh, liberate? He steals. Johnny rushes to the secretary and steals her purse. Dame esa bolsa, vieja. He grabs the purse and runs. <clears throat> Sancho snaps, he stops. The secretary runs after Johnny, grabs the purse away from him, kicking him as she does. No, no, no. We can't have any more thieves in the state administration. Put him back. Hey, we still got other models. Come on, Johnny, we'll sell you to some old lady. Sancho Miss takes, takes Johnny back to his place. Mr. Sancho, I don't think you quite understand what we need. We need something that will attract the women voters, um, something more traditional, more romantic. Ah, a lover. <laughs> Step right over here, senorita. Introducing our standard revolutionario and or early California bandit type. As you can see, he is well-built, sturdy, durable. This is the international harvester of Mexicans. What does he do? You name it, he does it. He rides horses, stays in the mountains, crosses deserts, plains, rivers, leads revolutions, follows revolutions, kills, can be killed, serves as a martyr, hero, movie star. Did I say movie star? <laughs> Did you ever see Viva Zapata? Viva Villa? Villa Rides? Pancho Villa Returns? Pancho Villa Goes Back? Pancho Villa Meets Abad and Costello? I've never seen any of those. Well, he was in all of them. Listen to this. Viva Villa! Uh, that, that's awfully loud. That's volume control. Viva Villa! That's better. And even if you don't see him in the movies, perhaps you saw him on TV. He makes commercials. Is there a frito bandito in your house? Oh, I've seen that one. <laughs> Another feature is that this one is his, he's economical. He runs on raw horse meat and tequila. Isn't that rather savage? Al contrario, it makes him a lover. Ooh. Ay, mama, sota cochota, bien pa'ca. He grabs the secretary and folds her back Latin lover style. Oh. <clears throat> now, wasn't that nice? Well, it, it was rather nice. <laughs> and finally, there is one outstanding feature about this model I know the ladies are going to love. He's a genuine antique. He was made in Mexico in 1910. Made in Mexico? That's right. Once in Tijuana, twice in Guadalajara, and three times in Cuernavaca. M Mr. Sancho, I thought he was an American product. No, but, uh, but he's... And I'm sorry, we can't buy anything but American products. Um, he, he just won't do. But he's an antique. I don't care. You still don't understand what we need. It's true, we need models that are Mexican, but it's more important that he also be American. American? That's right. And judging from what you've shown me here, I don't think you have what we need. Well, my lunch hour is almost over. I, I better. Mexican, but American. That's correct. Mexican, but American. Yeah, I, I think we've got exactly what you want. He just came in today. Give me a minute. <clears throat> he exits. He talks from backstage. Here he is in the shop. L let me just get some papers on him. There. <clears throat> Introducing our new 1970 Mexican American. Ta -ta Sancho brings out the Mexican American model, a clean shaven middle class type in a business suit with glasses. Where have you been hiding this one? He just came in this morning. Ain't he a beauty? Feast your eyes on him. Sturdy US steel frame, streamlined, modern. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he is built exactly like our Anglo models, except that he comes in a variety of darker shades. Naugahyde, leather, or leatherette? Naugahyde. 
Well, we'll just write that down. Yes, senorita, this model represents the apex of American engineering. He is bilingual, college educated, ambitious. Say the word acculturate and he accelerates. <laughs> he is intelligent, well mannered, clean. Did I say clean? Smell. Old Sabaco, my favorite. <sighs> Eric, we call him Eric Garcia. I want you to miss Miss Jimenez, Eric. Miss Jimenez, I am delighted to make your acquaintance. He kisses her hand. Oh, oh my, uh, how charming. Did you feel the suction? <laughs> he has seven specially engineered suction cups right behind his lips. He's a charmer, all right. Oh, how about boards? Does he function on boards? You name them, he is on them. Parole boards, draft boards, school boards, taco quality control boards, surfboards, two by fours. D does he function in politics? Sancho? Sorry, I paused. Okay, hold on, let's hold. I pro uh, for everything pros, but are you back? Yeah, so I'll just go into my line, Senorita. Right. Let her let her read the line before that again. Got it. Okay. Um, does he function on boards or the, does he function in politics? Which one do you want? That one, right? Oh. Okay. Uh, take it from does he function from politics? Okay. Does he function in politics? Senorita, you are looking at a political machine. Have you ever heard of the OEO EOC? COD, war on poverty. That's our model. Not only that, he makes political speeches. May I hear one? With pleasure. Eric, give us a speech. Mr. Congressman, Mr. Chairman, member of the board, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, please. Please, I come before you as a Mexican American to tell you about the problems of the Mexicans. The problem of the Mexicans stems from one thing and one thing only. He's stupid. He's uneducated. He needs to stay in school. He needs to be ambitious, forward looking, harder working. He needs to think American. 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 American, God bless America, God bless America, God bless America. He's patriotic too. Si, sí, senorita, and he loves his country. Let me just make a little adjustment. Well, what about upkeep? Is he economical? Well, no, I, I won't lie to you. The Mexican-American costs a little bit more, but you get what you pay for. He's worth every extra cent. You can keep him running on dry martinis, Lagendorf bread. Apple pie? Only moms. Of course, he's also programmed to eat Mexican food at ceremonial functions, but I must warn you, an overdose of beans will plug up his exhaust. Fine, fine. There's just one more question. How much do you want for him? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Today and today only, because you've been so sweet. I'm going to let you steal this model from me. I'm going to let you drive him off the lot for the simple price of, let's see, taxes and license included, $15,000. $15,000 for Mexican. Mexican? What are you talking about? This is a Mexican-American. We had to melt down two pachupos, a farm worker, and three gavachos to make this model. Uh, you want quality? You got to pay for it. This is no cheap runabout. He's got... Okay, oh, okay, I'll, I'll take him. You will? Here's your money. You mind if I count it? Go right ahead. Well, you get your pink slip in the mail. Oh, do you want me to wrap him up for you? We got a box in the back. No, thank you. The governor's having a luncheon and we need a brown face in the crowd. How do I drive him? Just snap your fingers. He'll do anything you want. Mexican-American steps forward. 
Raza querida, vamos levantando armas para liberarnos de estos desgraciados gabachos que nos explotan. ¡Vamos! ¿Qué dice? About taking up arms, killing white people, etc. Oh, but, but, but he's not supposed to say that. Look, lady, don't blame me for boxing the factory. He's your Mexican American. You bought him. Now drive him on the lot. But, but he's broken. Try snapping another finger. The Mexican American comes to life again. Esta gran una humanidad ha dicho basta y se ha puesto en marcha. Basta, basta. Viva la raza. Viva la causa. Viva la huelga. Vivan los brown berets. Vivan los estudiantes Chicano Power. The Mexican American turns toward the secretary who gasps and backs up. Ah. Turning toward the Pachuco farm worker ah. and revolucionario, snapping his fingers, turning each of them on one by one. I'm going to get you, baby. Viva la raza. Viva la huelga. Viva la huelga. Viva la huelga. Viva la revolución. The three models join together and advance toward the secretary who backs up and runs out of the shop screaming. Sancho is on the other side of the shop holding his money in his hand. They all freeze. After a few seconds of silence, the pachuco moves and stretches, shaking his arms, loosening up. The farm worker and revolucionario do the same. Sancho stays where he is, frozen in his spot. The remaining four characters continue a conversation. Man, that was a long one to say. How did we do? Pretty good. Look at all the lana, man. He goes over to Sancho and removes the money from his hand. Sancho stays where he is. En la madre, look at all the money. We keep this up. We're going to be rich. Ah, they think we're machines. Burros! Puppets! The only thing I don't like is how come I always have to play the goddamn Mexican-American. Ah, that's what you get to fin for finishing high school. How about I wear this essay? Ah, oh, here it comes right now. 3,000 for you, 3,000 for you, 3,000 for you, and 3,000 for me. The rest we put back into the business. Oh, too much, man. Hey, where are you going, Batos, going tonight? Oh, I'm going over to Conchas. There's a party. Oh, wait a minute, Batos. What about our salesman? I think he needs another job. Oh, leave him to me. The Pachuco farm worker and Mexican-American exit talking loudly about their plans for the night. The revolucionario goes over to Sancho, removes his derby hat and cigar, lifts him up and throws him over his shoulder. Sancho hangs loose, lifeless, to the audience. He's the best model we got. Ahua! He exits. End of play. Yay! Hooray! If you're watching, we really enjoy emoji applause in our comments. Give these three fabulous actors a round of applause. We're just going to have a quick little discussion here around, about this piece with these three. And I'm just going to ask them the question that I ask all our guests, which is what did you find funny about that reading or about that piece? And how about we start with Letty? Letty, what, what did you find funny about Los Bandidos? It's one of my favorite pieces. And what I love about this piece is how absurd it is. You know, it takes these characters and really pushes the envelope with them, trying to make a point. So I like comedy that isn't just comedy for comedy's sake, but is trying to make a point and bring the lens on something. And I think this place does that very well. I agree. Thank you, Letty, for sharing that with us. How about you, Valeria? I'm a ladies first kind of gal. Oh, Sorry. thank <laughs> you. I love this because it's pretty much the story of my life, Katie, like how we as Mexicans are seen and as we always have like a stereotype all over the world. And being myself Mexican, you know, born and raised here in Tijuana, I always get the question, right? Are you Mexican? Why are you this, like this and that? And this pretty much puts the story here, puts it out there like we're, we're everything, we're everywhere, we're all shapes and colors. We 
we love to work we really love to live our life and live our dreams so that's what i love about the story and just i can laugh about it right because i see the truth and the reality of it and i truly can laugh about it because you know i get it and it's especially funny because we we as an i had valeria play a part that she probably would never really play just for an added element of satire here valeria play all these ridiculous stereotypical <laughs> male roles <laughs> for us today just you know i it, love it <laughs> to be i real, love to be yeah I love it to be silly and thank you for the casting that you it's gave me the opportunity that, to do this. Of course, it's something I'm enjoying on SNL right now. I don't know if any of you are watching, but they're having some of the most ridiculous male characters in our life being played by women lately, mm. especially in the opening sketches. It's and it's a choice that is very funny and SNL is a big satirical show so it's relevant and last but not least Jerry what did you find what do you find funny about this piece a little bit kind of what Letty was saying I love how absurd it is and how it is uh both it makes you think but also makes you laugh um I especially also love how it's very even though it is set in a very specific like like Regan era mm -hmm. so many things are still true like to this day uh, so many things also are of the time and that's great but it is it, it brings it's so well done that it does uh bring across many important points that's not even uh, that it's specific to Mexican culture and also some things that are just universal about you know acculturation in the United States and how that all works so uh you could change yeah. a couple of names in this piece mm -hmm. and have it be very very much modern mm -hmm. and by a couple of names i just mean like change reagan for <laughs> exactly exactly Biden. And then, <laughs> there you go you have <laughs> you you've made this piece modern it's yeah. all it really takes it's still very very topical well i just want to thank these three fabulous actors one more time for gracing us with their beautiful faces today thank you all so much for being here we're gonna dive into our lesson and teach everybody to write their own satire thanks for being here you three we'll see you again soon Thank you. All right. Big thanks and big round of emoji applause and just yelling yay in the comment section is great too. Let's thank our actors for joining in, joining in on this discussion and sharing their talents and expertise. I hope you enjoyed that example of satire and are getting some ideas percolating and developing your own. One of the best ways to explore satire, since it is really very, very personal to each artist, is to start making brainstorming choices about elements that you'd like to satirize for your writing. I can't tell you what will be the easiest for you to tease or poke fun of in the genre. That's up to you. Maybe it's that thing that you find yourself rolling your eyes at on Instagram each week. Maybe you're tired of how everyone in the grocery store does this one thing except you. <laughs> Maybe this is your chance to get those gripes about humanity off your chest and into a witty and provocative script that can change the world forever. I believe in you. I think you can do it. So here is our prompt for this week to help you formulate your thoughts. This is available at the link provided by our wonderful comment moderator, and I'm going to share the questions with you right now. You're going to fill out the following and then dig into your own short script. Question one, pick a premise, an element of modern life that you pointedly and humorously want to tease and make fun of in a satire. This is your chance. Number two, what is your point of view around this subject? What extreme elements of your given topic do you want to heighten through your satire? Number four, when and where does this new reality take place where you're going to explore this? And then with all of that brainstorming, you have lots to jump into and explore in a short scene. And I hope that you're going to share it with me at kharoff at theoldglobe.org so I can include it in our very funny writing festival in April. And since satire is such a hugely broad subject and it's just there's just too many wonderful things to share in one episode, I've included an extra PDF in our document link this week with extra bonus satire examples to share and to continue to inspire your own satirical writing. Dig in and enjoy and get funny.
And we'll see you next week with our fifth episode where we'll be digging into the wide, wonderful world of absurd writing. Hooray! We're going to get weird. We're going to get weirder. <laughs> see you then. I can't wait. Ha 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 ha